So think of what you're doing this very second. Uh, you're probably sitting at a desk, you're staring at a computer, and on the computer there are the materials for this lecture. And this already in of itself is a fairly complicated situation because if you think of it, there might be some words of the, on the screen very shortly. There are some images on the screen. In fact, in the little corner, there's even me talking to you. And, and so there's a lot of different things that are competing for your resources. And the question, of course, is which one should you uh, prioritize? Should you, should you read the sentences? Should you look at the example images? Or should you look at me as, uh, um, as I'm speaking? Uh, and of course, while all of this happens and when you're trying to decide what you want to give priority to, um, maybe on the desk, there's your favorite book that you would love to read. And, and it's somehow calling you and trying to divert you from what you're doing. And maybe there's your phone buzzing uh, on the side because the latest interesting thing has happened. And maybe on your other phone starts buzzing too because a friend of yours is sending a message. See, in every situation, um, there typically is a lot of different potential information that is sent our way. And an important question is, how do we pick out of all this information the one that we really want to focus on? Uh, and it's not just the stimuli from the outside. In fact, also your own thoughts are competing for your resources, are competing to be processed. Maybe some persistent thought about something that happened to you very recently that is sort of still floating in your mind and keeps somehow reoccurring in your mind. See, the problem I'm trying to get at is the fact that generally um, we are overloaded uh, with information. There's information competing for our resources all the time. Uh, and and our, our minds don't have enough capacity to, to bring in and to process all of this information at one time. There has to be some process by which we pick what we really want to, uh, what we really want to attend and we discard or ignore what we don't want to focus on. And now this process is what we refer to with the word attention. The idea of amongst all the things that are competing for your processing, for your resources, the idea of picking some and ignoring others. In fact, in the words of William James, the considered the founder of modern psychology, everyone knows what attention is. It is the taking possession by the mind in clear and vivid form of one out of what's, uh, what seems several simultaneously possible objects or trains of thought. And again, as, uh, as, he, um, as we said a moment ago, this implies both on the one hand withdrawal from something, so being able to filter out things that you don't want to attend to so that you can effectively focus on the particular thing that you want to dedicate your resources to. In other words, uh, in more of a textbook uh, type definition, you can think of attention as a set of, of, of neurocognitive mechanisms that implement the selection of what is relevant, the selection of the input that you want to focus on, and the rejection of the things that you don't want to process, that you don't want to prioritize. Now, um, generally, we divide attention in, in two different aspects. On the one hand, what we often refer to as selective attention, and the idea in selective attention is that there are several stimuli that are competing for your, um, for your resources. And you have to, uh, as we just said, you have to take some in and be able to ignore other information. The second form of attention that we will uh, see is divided attention. And the idea is that you have, there, there might be multiple stimuli that you might have to attend at the same time. You can't always just focus narrowly on one thing and ignore everything else. Sometimes you have to be able to divide your resources between multiple things. Uh, maybe listening to something while you're, you know, while you're biking or sort of trying to pay attention to two things at the same time. And, and we will look at these two uh, somewhat separately.
Now let's start with selective attention. So most of the things, most of the information that is available to you actually turns out not to be consciously processed. Most of what's happening around you, most of the stimuli that are trying to compete for your resources never make it into your conscious awareness. I mean, right now, this very second, a lot of the stuff that is around you, you're just not processing it uh, in any conscious way. Um, in the sense, and this is a reflection of the fact that you're focused on some things and thereby you're trying to ignore others. Um, and this does, however, lead to the fact that we very often miss a lot of information that is right there in plain sight. And this is a phenomenon known as inattentional blindness. The idea that we can indeed fail to perceive an object or an event that is right there in plain sight, right in front of us. And this is not about, you know, any failure or any, any sort of a problem with, with our visual system. It's just a reflection of the fact that often there's just so much information going on that our, our minds have to pick something and have to ignore other things. And sometimes um, these things that we ignore just turn out to be fairly egregious. And the book has a wonderful video about this, which I would, I would love for you to see. Uh, because it will surprise you probably. I just want to show you a couple examples, a couple, a couple funny examples uh, from movies and, and, and the TV. Um, so this is a scene from The, Gladi the Gladiator, um, which supposedly takes place during the Roman Empire. And as you can see here, um, as um, uh, a chariot uh, gets overturned, uh, the gas tank that is powering it is pretty obviously right there in sight. And yet, nobody really noticed it. I mean, it's quite crazy, it's right there. And somehow it got missed. Another similar example, this is from the movie Braveheart, uh, supposedly taking place, I think, somewhere in the 13th century, but pretty obviously in the background, there's a car. Definitely not present in the 13th century. And it's right there. It's not difficult to see. It's right there. Somehow nobody noticed it, or the two or three people that were doing, um, that were uh, editing, just didn't notice it. Of course, there's so much going on in this scene. There's so many other things happening that that kind of just blended in the background and nobody noticed it. Uh, same thing, Pirates of the Caribbean. Apparently, so this is a fairly confused scene. Uh, there's a lot of people in the background that are moving, but there also is random um, cowboy hat dude in the background. Definitely also not the right time period. How did nobody notice this? It's, it's right there. I mean, now that you're seeing it, it's just so obvious. And yet, nobody noticed it. In fact, even the Simpsons decided to have, to have their, their own example of inattentional blindness. This is a scene where Marge tells Homer that she's pregnant with the third child. Um, however, <laughs> right here, there is a picture of their third child already, um, definitely already born and already one or two years old. Uh, in fact, she already has uh, her, trademark, her trademark pacifier in the picture. So this too, obviously, um, in this ironic way, is an example, would be an example of inattentional blindness. So the fact that sometimes stuff is right there, but because we're so overwhelmed with stimuli all the time, we need to focus on what's important and not focus on everything else that is distracting us. And so sometimes we miss very important stuff. And as I said, your book has a wonderful video. Uh, as I said, it, it might surprise you, uh, watch it. Now, it's not just about inattentional blindness, it's also about change blindness. Sometimes we seem to have an inability to detect changes in scenes. Now maybe you see it already, maybe you don't, but it's a really obvious gigantic thing that is changing right in front of your eyes. Maybe you've seen it, but you'd be surprised to notice if you haven't noticed it already, that the line here every time the image flickers, goes from being continuous to being interrupted. And this is a fairly, this is a, on the easy spectrum uh, of these things. If you want to Google change blindness, 
uh, you will notice some pretty hard examples. Some of these sometimes are very hard to detect and the book gives you a couple of good examples. I'd like to show you one video um, that um, makes the same point. Now this is known as the um, card color changing trick uh, and it's, uh, it's a little trick with some cards. So pay good attention to the cards. Hi, I'm Richard, this is Sarah, and we're going to perform the amazing colour-changing card trick with this blue-backed deck of cards. Now the idea is very simple. I'm just going to spread the cards in front of Sarah and ask her to push any card towards the camera. Right, okay, let's see. I'm going to go for this card here. Okay. Now Sarah could have selected any card at all from the deck. But she selected the card, which is now face down on the table. And what I'm going to ask her to do is show us which card she selected. Right, so the card that I chose was in fact the Three of Diamonds. The Three of Diamonds, okay, an excellent choice. That card goes back into the deck. Now I'm just going to spread the cards face up on the table. Do a little click of the fingers and you'll see that Sarah's card here has now got a blue back. Not particularly surprising, what's slightly more surprising is all of the other cards have got red backs. And that is the amazing color changing card trick. So, did you notice what happened? And I, you probably were focusing as I instructed you to on the cards. Turns out this is really not about the cards. This is a wonderful example uh, of uh, change blindness. Look at the differences between when the video started and when the video ended. So this is how it looked at the image at the beginning and this is how it looked at the end. Did you notice this thing? Yeah. Um, they're going to show it from a sort of broader Hi, perspective. I'm Richard. This is Sarah, and we're going to perform the amazing color-changing card this trick. This is a wonderful this example deck of how of because cards. you were Now the idea is very simple. Cards, I'm just going to spread the cards in front of Sarah and in ask her to push any card towards the camera. What was happening. So for one, the guy's t-shirt um, starts uh, in that sort of uh, gold and is now black. Okay. Now Sarah could have selected any and then card she had this black from the deck. Um, but she selected the card, on, she now which is now face sweater. down on the table. And you know, the first time you see this, do you don't show us which card right. she selected. You didn't register any of this. Right, so the card that I chose was in fact the Three of Diamonds. The Three of Diamonds, okay, an excellent choice. That card goes back into the deck. Now I'm just going to spread the cards face up on the table. Do a little click of the fingers, and you'll see that Sarah's card here has now got a blue back. Not particularly surprising, what's slightly more surprising is all of the other cards have got red backs. And that is the amazing color changing card trick. Very interesting, right? Because we were focusing on one thing, because our mind was tracking one thing and, and rightfully ignoring all these things in the environment, we missed some enormous things. I mean, it's, it's not, these are not tiny details in a corner of the image. We were staring at these individuals and we failed to notice that the, their t-shirts changed. We failed to notice that the color of the table, I mean, there are only four things in this image. There's two people, one table, one background, and the cards. We were, we were looking at the cards, we missed everything else. And see, and this is a wonderful example of the fact that our minds just don't have the sufficient capacity to, to take in all the information that is reaching us at any one time. And in the sense, there really is a bottleneck. There's a bottleneck, there's just too much information out there. And so we need to pick and choose what information to process and what information to filter.